Hey friends, welcome back to this video. Today I'll be going through some tips that help me achieve a grade 9 in GCSE Physics. Okay, so tip number one is just to know your key terms and definitions. These without fail are one and two mark questions that come up each year in the exam. So just looking at the 2019 paper, you can see there's one here, one here, loads more. And these are the easiest marks to gain, but they're also the easiest to lose if you don't know this content. And I think there's actually a lot more value than just the one or two marks you gain from answering these questions correctly. In my experience, these questions kind of set you up for the rest of the paper. And as the one and two mark questions are usually towards the front of the paper, the earlier questions you do, getting into a good rhythm and getting some questions right just makes you relax a bit more and it generally means that the rest of the paper goes well. So what I find basically is that there's a positive knock-on effect that you get from getting these questions right that just puts you in a good mindset for the rest of the paper. However, the flip side of that is that there's also a negative knock-on effect if you're unsure on these early questions that can put you in a bad mindset for the rest of the paper. Which is why, like I said, I think there's a bit more value to these questions than just the one or two marks you gain. The easiest way to learn these key terms and definitions that I found was using flashcards, which utilizes both active recall and spaced repetition. And what I mean by spaced repetition is that you can continue to do it over a period of time. So you can start doing these flashcards every other day, and then you can go to once a week, once every two weeks, once a month, and it can stick in your long-term memory better, which is why I really recommend flashcards to memorize these key terms and definitions. In terms of websites to use to make these flashcards, there are quite a few, Anki, Quizlet, Brainscape, but the one that I would really recommend personally is Brainscape. I actually use this for my A-level physics, and it's just a really great resource. You can add questions and answers, it's really easy to use. If you pay for the full version, you can add pictures and diagrams to your answers to make them more coherent. And also you can download this app on your phone, on your laptop, so you can have them with you wherever you go. So for me, when I'm on the train, I'll just do about 15 minutes of flashcards. It's really convenient, you don't have to faff around with any paper or anything like this. It's just a lot more convenient. So yeah, I'd really recommend using Brainscape. Tip number two is to understand the practicals. And there's two sides of this. The first side is the required practicals. And the second side is being able to give a legitimate and effective method when the exam paper gives you a practical you may not be too familiar with. So in terms of required practicals, for me, I had one sheet of A4 paper for each of the six practicals. And on this piece of paper, I'd have the setup, the method, the safety, any conclusions, any problems with it, anything like this. And it was just a really easy way for me to see what I needed to know for these practicals. What I'd recommend you doing though, is along with doing this A4 sheet of paper, then convert it into flashcards. So for example, a flashcard of the method, a flashcard for the setup, flashcards for any conclusions you need to know. It makes it a lot easier to memorize. You can then use the A4 sheet of paper and the flashcards to test yourself or let others test you about the practical. I basically got to the point where I memorized all the different steps that the practical was basically stuck in my brain and I could just recite the practicals to someone if I was asked to. And these are really easy marks to pick up on the exam because you know at least one of these required practicals is gonna come up. So it's something that's guaranteed to get you marks on the test if you revise it properly. And the second part of this tip, knowing your practicals, is being able to give a method, set up, conclusions from a practical that the exam may give you that you haven't formally memorized. An example of that can be seen here. All this is really testing you on is your understanding of the topic. So if you truly understand the topic that the question is asking you about, then you'd be able to give a method, a setup, the equipment you're gonna use, the conclusions you're likely to get, and these should be quite easy marks to pick up. But they do require you to understand the topic that the practical is asking you about. Exam practice version cards, YouTube videos are gonna to contribute to this. Tip number three is to show the equations that you are using. So when I had a question that involved using a formula or an equation, my first step of working was always just writing this equation down. And I did this for two main reasons. Firstly, it meant that the examiner could clearly see what I was doing. And secondly, that it meant that I could clearly see what I was doing. I would then go on to clearly substitute my values into this equation and obtain my answer by rearranging if necessary. And it just made the process of what I was doing so much clearer. Also, when it came back around to checking my answers after doing the paper, it meant that I could clearly see what method I was doing. And it made it more easy to spot any mistakes if I had made one. And you know, it just makes it easier for the examiner to quickly give you the accuracy and method marks for a question. And who doesn't want that? So yeah, by writing down the equations for your first line, it kind of sets you up for the rest of the question. And it means that you and the examiner can just clearly see what you are doing. So it's not just scribbling out all over the place a bunch of equations. Write the equation down first, substitute in clearly, get your answer. And I find this really, really helpful. Tip number four is to diversify the resources you use for revising. And all I mean by this is just using a wide range of resources to revise from. For example, the subject content on your examples website, revision guides, textbooks, 
YouTube videos, I could go on. Basically, just using a wide range of resources so you kind of just cover every aspect of the course and you make sure you don't miss anything out. I especially found using the specification slash subject content really helpful as well as YouTube videos. So for YouTube videos, free science lessons was amazing and not just for physics, for all the sciences. You had both the papers laid out methodically and you could work through the videos and they weren't too long so you could remain interested and engaged. These were a main part of contributing to revision cards that I made and I think they ultimately really helped me achieve grade nine. The vast majority, if not all the content is covered by these videos and they also go through the required practicals and what you need to know in terms of the method, the setup, all this stuff. I then used the specification and the subject content to see if there was any gaps in my knowledge that I can then go on to rectify. I didn't do this personally, but a lot of my friends printed out the specification and they used it to tick it off. They found this both useful and motivating because putting a little tick next to something once you understood it kind of just pushes you to do more. So maybe give that a go. Tip number five is to do exam practice. So this means doing past papers and practice questions in preferably exam-like scenarios. So what I mean by this is to try and find a quiet space, maybe time yourself so you get used to the timing of the actual exam and just go through some questions. Then after you've done the questions slash the paper, you can mark it yourself and give any corrections. This can be quite a good way of checking where about you're working at in terms of what grade you're working at, because you can quickly just check what the grade boundaries were for the paper in that year. But more importantly, you can use this as a way to see where your weaknesses are. Obviously the questions you're not really understanding, the ones you're not getting right, that is where your weaknesses are going to be. This then means that you can go on to adapt your revision to focus more on these weaknesses. For example, if you're doing a past paper and you realise you're getting a lot of the wave questions incorrect, you can then go and practice the revision cards you made on waves more and hopefully build up that knowledge even more. Alternatively, you go to the waves section of the textbook and do some questions from there. If you still don't understand the topic or the question, you can go to your teacher, watch some YouTube videos on it, look at the examiner's report, anything like this. But it just means you can see where your weaknesses are and then work on that weakness to make it a strength. Point number six is to go to the study sessions run by your school. I found these really helpful in year 11 and my school run them at both lunch times and after school. People there want to be there and want to learn. So you usually get a lot more from these. And not only do you learn more, there's a great opportunity to ask your teacher questions because there's usually less people in these sessions than there are in your lessons. So that kind of wraps up this video. If you want to know how I achieved a grade nine in GCSE computer science, or how I managed to get grade lines in all of my GCSEs, check out these two videos here. If not, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next Saturday.